Always great talking to Whitney. Uh, DowntownSlow.com if you want to find out what's going on with Farmer's Market. And uh, we got uh, Jen Bravo coming on here in a little bit. A wine festival happening in Paso Robles this weekend. Are you going to be running around? Because there's going to be a lot of people in town. All coming to yeah, drink Yeah, I'm going wine. to be running around, but it's going to be mainly for uh, my daughter. It's her birthday this weekend. so uh, Get ready, Paso Robles. Templeton. For my, for my daughter's birthday? Uh, yes, and for Wine Fest weekend. It's going to be crazy eight-year-olds running around everywhere. But you're going to do it at your house, right? Mm-hmm. So you're good to go. Yeah, I would Are say we? if you're a local, staying home might be your best bet unless you like to get crazy with the, you know, people from out of town. No, it's cool because there's a lot to do for anybody that's that's in Paso Robles, Templeton, Atascadero, um, because you just drive down the street and there's a winery in most cases. Or you hop in an Uber, and there's a winery in most cases, and there'll be something fun to do. And in a time when there's not been a lot of fun things to do, that's very true. Kind of, kind of your gateway into. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the going, old normal. Going back to that, if you want to eat at a restaurant downtown, let's say two o'clock yes. on Saturday, good luck. Yeah, but eat at a winery because there's 300 of them. That's, that's gonna, true. They're going to have some kind of food option. And we're going to talk to Jen about that. PasoWine.com is a great place to go if you want to find wineries that are doing food. Uh, you can actually select that you want to only see wineries that are doing food, and that'll all pop up for you. It's now time to do Dumbass of the Day, brought to you by Peterson's U-Cart. Let's see if he got it ready. He promised he would. Oh, yes. The I gold do. standard in landscape gravel is... Oh, man, I'm going to have to go back and forth no, on this No, you're not one. ready. Hold on a second. No, I have it. I have it saved, but the problem is I had something else uh, ready to go, so let me just make sure. That All right. Well, I while have... you do that, I'll tell everybody that they have green, regular decomposed granite, and three-quarter rock. It's all 10% off during the month of May. They do free delivery in Atascadero. You can visit their website, Peterson, the letter U, cart.com. Now, the gold standard in landscape gravel is... California gold. <laughs> what the hell? Wait, California Gold. Why does it sound like that? Because you had to edit him? The name of the show is California's Gold, <laughs> but the rock is California I Gold. I wanted to hear California it. Gold. Yeah, he doesn't even sound like Hugh. I sound like more Hugh Hazard. I say California, California Gold. gold. California Gold. All right. uh, California Gold. You can find that at Peterson Ucart in A-Town. How pathetic can some people be? I've been looking for a job. Um, my friends tell me that they're hiring people to supervise drug tests. Like go in the room with the guy in the cup. Wiener watcher, I'm pretty sure, is the technical term for it. I thought I could do this job. I thought I could like at least half-ass my way through this job. You know, show up with my Game Boy, play a little Tetris. My friend's like, no, you have to literally physically watch them pee in the cup. Because apparently what the kids are doing is taking bags of fake piss and strapping it to themselves and feeding around tubing and pissing out the fake piss to get around the drug test. Let me explain something to you. If you're gonna MacGyver a piss plumbing system, you get to pass my drug test. If you're gonna engineer a urine irrigation device, who am I to tell you you can't run the deep fryer at the Wendy's? of the day 93.3 kzoc mark serbo was a lot less uh inconspicuous when doing his drugs um he was on a jet blue flight from new york to san francisco that flight was forced to land in minneapolis after he was seen snorting a white substance and sexually harassing women the flight departed from JFK, was forced to divert to Minneapolis after a customer on board began acting erratically and aggressively towards crew members and other customers. Might have I've, something to do with that cocaine. I've never done cocaine, so I don't know what it triggers, like the the how people act on I it. I think it keeps you up. I think it's like an upper. But does it does it get you to the point where it has a Viagra quality? I don't know. I, I don't mean, know about that. Like he's sitting there, you know, he's like being handsy with the. There's just a lot of crew. people right now that could just text in. Yeah. <laughs> the crew, the crew does not want to be handsy right now, okay? They're dealing with a lot of stress based on the last year, okay? Flight was met by law enforcement in um, Minneapolis. You know, they always say when you sit down, you can't smoke cigarettes or chew tobacco. No tobacco products They've at all. They've never said. They've never they said. They say you can't consume your own alcohol, but they never said you couldn't consume your own cocaine. This is on you, JetBlue. <laughs> Dummies. 
You should have put that in the, in the uh, message. disclaimer. Yeah, don't be going back to the bathroom and starting to snort your cocaine, okay? <laughs> okay? No, uh, not on this on flight. This flight uh, no uh, alcohol not purchased on board and no cocaine. <laughs> um, another passenger took to Twitter, of course, because that's what we do. <laughs> Got the Wi Fi. It showed um, a, a video of a crew member explaining to everyone that the suspect had allegedly touched a female passenger and refused to wear a mask. Well, it kind of gets in the way of doing cocaine, right? Yeah. And then he said, uh, my JetBlue flight to San Francisco just got diverted to Minneapolis because an anti-masker was... Why has it got to be about an anti-masker? It's a okay. cokehead, man. Couldn't, couldn't it have been a guy was snorting coke in the bathroom? A cokehead. We got a cokehead. Hey, Mr. Uh, Virtual Signaler. Have you ever tried to do cocaine with a mask on? It's <laughs> damn near impossible. you got to have a okay? really long straw. And plus, how are you going to know if the people that you're sexually harassing are going to be reciprocal to you if you're blocking your face with something, okay? So let's leave the mask out of this and the uh, the ability to have it off your face, okay? Yes, yes. He also said props to the crew for dealing with this maniac and making everybody late to San Francisco. I'm glad you were there to report on this and not actually help the crew. Yeah. Though. Real, real brave of you. Oh, hit send on that tweet. Yeah, getting it done. Looking out for others. He also reported that a bag with the substance was found in the man's seat, and that was the white substance, which, I don't know. He made several trips to the bathroom. In the short period of time from New York to Minneapolis, what ended up being Minneapolis. Um, if you ever saw somebody doing cocaine, would you report it to somebody? Like, if you were on a plane, would you report if somebody's doing cocaine? I don't know. That and let's leave the sexual harassment and the anti mask yeah, I just looked over and the stuff. guy next to me has got his tray down and he's doing a yeah, line. Let's go back a year and a half ago, okay? He's not sexually harassing anybody. He, you don't have to worry about him wearing a mask because it's a year yeah, and a half. Yeah, ago. I don't think I would. I, I don't think I would report anybody doing. Until he either. started like freaking out or getting all like weird, then I'd be like, hit the button, and say, hey, by the way, this guy I just saw do some coke, and that's why he's probably freaking out. But if he just did the coke and sat there, I'd be as shocked at the brazenness of it the same way I was when I was a kid, and somebody be opening up the uh, centerfold of a Playboy. I'd be like, really? That's that's how you want to be remembered? I just want everybody? to move my seat. I'd be like, yeah, remember that family that was broken up and they wanted to sit together? They can have my seat. I'll, I'll trade with them now. Get that mother and her kid back here. Uh-huh. <laughs> they can sit next to Cokie. <laughs> Cokie Roberts. I mean, if they were, okay, what if they were sitting right next to you? <laughs> <laughs> Not just a few. Because when I envisioned that question initially, it was like four or five seats over. But if they're sitting, like, I don't know you from Adam. Yeah, I probably would say something to the person. I'm not going to say anything to the flight. I'm like, really? Like, right here? Like, this probably isn't a good idea. Then you got some balls on you, man. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Mind your own business. (laughs) Take it above? All right. Clearly. I'll I'll take a double Bloody Mary. I want to make Twitter reporter the dumbass of the day. Yeah, he, he gets it too. He had to. He had to pull in the whole so brave anti masker snorting yeah. cocaine. Yeah, like it just just a guy snorting cocaine. Okay. Okay. Don't, he's fondling don't bury a woman. The lead with the mask. He's fondling a woman. That's sexual assault. Yeah. He's doing cocaine on a drug. That's federal crime. And you go with the anti masker. He leads with anti masker. So that guy's obviously going to get it. And the guy from Twitter. This guy was not wearing a mask. Oh yeah. By the way, he was See? snorting cocaine and sexually harassing. Told you yesterday, passenger. Twitter's the downfall of society. <laughs> but they pushed that message right on through. Congratulations to Mark Serbo for doing the cocaine and Matt Kawashima for shooting the video and then taking to Twitter to show everybody that you were there because that's all it was doing. And then in in the meantime, showing everybody that you were there, also layering in that whole message of, by the way, I don't condone any of this because he was not wearing a mask. <laughs> so if he was, then it would be okay. Because Virtue signaling oh from 25,000 feet. You're Jeff and Jeremy's. Dumbass of the day. 
It's Jeff and Jeremy. We got uh, Jenny from the block on. Uh, Jen Bravo from the uh, Past Troubles Wine Country Alliance, the PRWCA. Called, left you a voicemail yesterday like, hey, it's Jenny. <sighs> I, yeah, Jenny, what's the deal with that? Jenny? I thought Jennifer's quit going by Jenny in high school. Well, it's so funny. I always forget that my voicemail says Jenny, but my family and like friends I grew up with call me Jenny, so I'm just like used to that. But then, like my professional name is Jennifer, of course. But then everyone just calls me Jen, so whatever. Jer- Jeremy left left you a voicemail um, the other day because uh, we were okay. supposed to do this the okay. other day, um, and we and we and it was, we spaced. It was my fault, 100. percent And um, he left you a voicemail. Did you listen to the voicemail? I did not listen to his voicemail. It didn't come up in caller ID, so... Mm -hmm. It was on your business phone. Your business phone, doesn't it? Oh, it was? Oh, well, I'm like halfway in my office and mostly at home these days, so... So um, the poll question today is, uh, do you listen to your voicemail when you miss a call, or do you just call the person back? (laughs) 50-50. I'm 50-50. Call them back. I just call it back. And I have one of these iPhones, of the and it transcribes the voicemail for me. So I can just look at it. It says voicemail, click it, and then I can read it. But usually half of it's wrong because Siri sucks. Right. So, um, See, this is where I go wrong on this one, Jenny, is <laughs> I call the person right back. And if they don't answer, then I go back and I listen to the voicemail to see if it's worth uh, you know, furthering the, the call. Same way, if it's worth like calling back, like again. <laughs> Otherwise, or I'm like, or I'm like, why didn't they just text me? Right. You know, so funny. They left me this on the voicemail. It would have been so much more effective if they just texted me. Yeah, texting is. I, I know, that's I what I do. Saved like thirty seconds. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the number that we were given for the interview was your business phone. So, um, and, well, what is this number right now? Is this your cell or business? That this is my cell. Oh. Is this the number we called yesterday and left a message? Does your voicemail on here say, hey, it's Jenny? Yeah, it does. So, oh. no, do you call my cell phone? Do you have an iPhone? Yeah. Oh, God, you have no excuse, Wait. girl. I have one. Yeah. I mean, the, you don't even have to dial in or a password or anything. You just hit voicemail and it's there. It starts playing. Okay. I know, we're going to let it go. Does your mom and dad call you Jenny? They do. Yeah. What about your husband? What does he call you? Jenny, all my family, and everyone I grew up with calls me Jenny. Yeah. We're going to call you Jenny then, because I feel like we're there. Okay. Mm. We're there. I think we've known each other long enough. Yeah, it's been like almost a decade, right? I mean, you and me anyways. I mean, maybe Jeff not as long, but pretty close. Uh, All right, so Wine Festival is this weekend. It is probably one of the biggest events on the Central Coast every year, Uh, definitely in Paso. Uh, I know because of everything, it's not June 15th, so we can't do it in the park. But um, But how are you doing it this year? You know, um, it's really cool because obviously no tasting in the park, which is a huge deal. But all of the wineries obviously are so excited to, like, be, like, open and have people indoors and outdoors and have people coming back to support them. So there's, like, this really rad energy in the air up here right now. It's really cool. Um, And everyone's got something really unique and fun happening. So all weekend long, all the wineries have their own kind of events happening, activities as we're calling them, you know, because we really can't say events yet. So PasoWine.com, you can check it out. Make your plans, book in advance for sure. Are you guys coming up this weekend? Uh, Yeah, well, I I live there, so um, I'll be there. Oh, yeah, you're my neighbor, but yeah. No, not anymore. I moved to Paso. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, he moved oh. to Grover Beach, and then he moved to Pass. Yeah, I moved to Grover Beach. I took oh, a gap. So you're not I, my Templeton. I took, I took some gap months, and then we uh, found a house with a pool. Yeah, but he's, he upgraded. Uh, uh, he upgraded uh, his, his pool lifestyle is on par now. He's, I mean, if you have a pool, that's an upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so... I don't know. Well, he's he's well, he's he bought a Gotta house. Pay that guy or to come around and put chlorine tablets in it, and that's a, that's a cost that I'm. He's putting all the work in right now, so he's not super excited about the new backyard. But it, when he gets done with it, it's going to be amazing. That you never get done with anything on a house. Though. Yeah, that's true. But whatever. Okay, so <laughs> get out this week and take a break. Go out to the wineries. Go to PasoWine.com. And I know, talk about the website, because I know that you can search for different things. Like if you want barbecue, you you can actually search for that, and it'll just pop up the wineries that are doing something this weekend where you can eat. Yeah. <laughs> we have like a really cool search function. We have, you can like open up and look at like the Wine Fest official guide and see what wineries are doing. Or you can search by 
activity, by food, by pet-friendly, kid-friendly, tours, you name it, and then that can kind of help, like, help you make your decision of what you're going to do this weekend. But big theme is, like, live music and food because we can do live music again. So almost every winery has some sort of really cool food element or food pairing element and live music. I know that a lot of the business is driven by data, and obviously when you have a lot of people coming to a centralized location like the park, you're able to source that data. Is there any way that you're going to be able to tell how successful this version of Wine Festival Weekend will be? Well, I can tell you that all of the hotels and Airbnbs are currently pretty much sold out, will be sold out. So that is a big indicator. Also, our, uh, you know, handy Google Analytics there that I uh, Mm -hmm. work on is that uh, people are coming. People are here, so wow. it's it's going to be busy. Yeah, people people miss Paso. They want to come back and see their favorite wineries. They want to get out. So that means you better get downtown if you want to eat somewhere in Paso tonight because this weekend it's going to be full. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've Seriously. tried. I tried a four o'clock on a Saturday thinking I could sneak in. Yeah, no. get your ass no. out of here, loser! You better make no. a reservation exactly. on Wednesday to come here on Saturday. And that's when there was vacancies at some Airbnbs. Yeah, come so. on. All right, Jim. Well, please tell Chris and Joel we said hi. You work with two really cool Absolutely. people, and you all three have great jobs, and we love you all. So thank you very much, and uh, enjoy Thanks this. Me guys. Yeah, thanks, you bet. Thanks for uh, calling me back. We will always call you back, Jenny, from the block. <laughs> and and right, I can't uh, wait to listen to your voicemail. And uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to bother leaving voicemails from now on. <laughs> yeah, exa- just, just text me, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's only going to be gifts, all right? That's it. Yes. Yeah, oh, please. You have to decode yeah. the gifts. That's what I do with my wife. All right, there goes Jen. Bravo, Jenny from the block from the Pass Rebels Wine Country Alliance. Go to PassoWine.com to check out everything that they have in store for Pass Rebels Wine Festival weekend starting tonight. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. Jeff and Jeremy here. You're home for the $1,000 giveaway brought to you by Perry Ford Lincoln in Slow. Uh, got to give away that money today. Could it be yours? Maybe. All you have to do is keep listening for your playlist. Could play at any time. If you haven't submitted yours, just three of your favorite classic rock songs or three of any songs you want. KZOZ.com for all the details. So um, when you got your car scratched up by a bicycle, where was it? It was downtown. It was on the other side of um, the freeway off of Choro. It was a side street off of Choro. I'd parked across the street to go see a buddy. Parked along the street where I was supposed to, and some bicyclist that was riding down the sidewalk came down, lost well, balance, and hit my truck. Well, maybe this is good news then. That was in the Anholm uh, neighborhood, correct? I don't know. That's what that sure. neighborhood's called. That's what that neighborhood's You called. know where uh, it's over by, by Lincoln Deli yeah, a little bit. That's Anholm. Yeah. Um, well, now they're going to build a bicycle lane all the way through there, a protected bicycle lane. Weren't they talking about not doing cars through there or something? They were doing something. Yeah, I remember them talking. We talked about this before. Do you remember? It was a long time ago. It's going to be on Choro and and, and a protected bike lane down Choro and Broad Street. Is that the same bike lane they put on Hygera Street where we lost an entire lane of traffic and then? Yes. Yeah. Now, I don't know how it's going to work for Broad Street because Broad is, you know, it goes up on the hill. It, you know. It's got speed bumps on it already. They'll figure it out. I'm not worried about it. Speed bumps. They got a $1.7 million grant. That's What's gonna... a speed bump? The bicyclists? <laughs> when you run them over? But um bumps. Let me, uh, let me get I Lawn live... Boy Kevin. Lawn Boy Kevin. Thank I've you. I've noticed because I've been in the market that houses on those two streets have been going up for sale fast and furious. Oh, people want out. Recently. I don't, I, understand. I don't know if they want out. Or they're taking advantage of the market, or they don't want to have to deal with what's coming up, and that is somewhat of a construction project that is going to get going right? through there. It's, that's not like they have well, to do anything. Yeah, but they have to put up the so it's paint a stripe. So not the widest streets, Broad and, and and Choro, especially in that neighborhood, they're not wide streets. You just can't squeeze a protected bike lane in there. So you think they're going to go you're into gonna, people's yards? You're going to have no parking. Take out the sidewalk. Re- remember the Higuera situation. <sighs> The Higuera situation, you put that bike lane down there. Now, if you want to park on the right side, 
It's a pain in the ass only because you not only have to negotiate a parallel park situation, but you have to do it without, by, you know, you have to check and see that the bicycle is not coming. And I've never parked at an angle like this side by side, yes, but not at a 45 degree angle. So then you got to use the bike lane to get into the parallel parking situation. I'm guessing if they're allowing parallel parking on Broad and Choro, that that's going to have to be how it goes down. Or are you going to just have to pack, uh, park on the closest side street? Then does that impact the neighbors that are already there? Oh, great uh, questions. Uh, you got to go to a city council meeting. Yeah, now, now I look at what these houses are selling for in that Ann Holm area, and I'm like thinking, wait a minute, I've got to park a block down the street from my house if I you know, don't want to park in front of it because I can't park in front of it because there's a bison lane there now i'm a little upset by that if that's they're the case. just slowly pushing out vehicles from slow it's not just going electric slowly autonomous pushing. no they're pushing us all out so if you want to drive a vehicle you don't want to live in slow you want to live somewhere else because downtown slow and i'll consider this part the Anholm district as you call it is, is still this is the downtown corridor area of san luis obispo and they don't want they don't want vehicles down there two bike lanes on choro street Lincoln to Mission. Hmm. All right. There you go. Parking on one side, no parking on the other side. I mean, this is great if you're a bicyclist, right? I'm sure there's bicyclists right now that are listening. I don't think they listen to us, but, you know, they're out there, and you probably know one. They're, they're going to be very happy about all this. And who knows? Maybe they'll do a, a great job on this ergonomically, be and it'll, it'll, lane. It'll, be, it'll work for both. There'll be a mixed-use lane and a dedicated bike lane. So the mixed-use lane... Will get to go on permission to Ramona. The mixed use lane will have bi- a combination of bicyclists and cars. That will be going, I guess, northbound. Yes, that will be going northbound. Southbound will be a dedicated bike lane going from Foothill to towards downtown. Um, that is a dedicated bike lane. The cars going from Foothill to downtown will have their own travel lane, but the ones going northbound from downtown. Up towards Foothill, we'll have to share the lane with bikes with a bicycle, which is uphill. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, it is. <laughs> I get stuck by a, a garbage truck on that road. I'm fuming pissed. Well, don't go that way if you're running late. <laughs>